In this video help, we're going to be doing the sales screen. We're on the sales screen and let's go ahead and go through the different things we find on here. We have the quick access buttons, the inventory, customer, main menu, and sales list view. We're going to be going through the items on the menu also where the active screens are and we're going to go and cover all these icons right here as far as the buttons going to those screens. Remember this is a one tap goes to all those screens. Let's start at the top. The first thing we're going to do is if you're doing an invoice for a customer, you might have a couple of different ways you do invoices depending on your business. The first thing you want to do is you put in the store that's actually going to be doing the invoice. And the next thing is, is you're going to be adding the information for the edit part of the invoice. This is not the actual invoice that you're going to be sending if you do. And what I was discussing a few seconds ago was, depending on the kind of business you are, you may not generate a paper invoice for the client. There is a, a long invoice included in this application where you can do an infinite number of items in that, that invoice. But if you do not print invoices, you would still be able to use that screen for either reports as far as what you want to see on an invoice or and or how you want to manage the data as far as trend analysis stuff with sales. The information we're going to be covering shortly is this information, but I want to also point out that we can take payments on this screen and we also have an invoice tab. Let's do payments first. In the invoice uh, creation, you're actually adding information that will put a subtotal, the tax, the invoice uh, sum. What you're doing here is the sum paid and the balance. So if you put a paid amount in here, it's going to uh, be done down here in the, in the where you accept the payment. It'll show you the balance due and how the cash was received. It may be in the form of a uh, bank uh, check or and or it could be cash or it could be a credit card. Let's take a look at the actual entry of the information in the payment tab. Uh, this will automatically add the ID when you create a new item in this record. So you'd pop in, you'd put the date in for the actual transaction where you're making a payment. When you put that in, it's going to go ahead and you're going to put in the amount that's actually due, the amount that's been paid, the balance will show here and then it's paid with. And if you're doing a credit card transaction, it's a good idea to take the last four on the credit card so that if there's any kind of a issue later on and you're trying to define what card was actually used, you can have the four digits of the, of the client's uh, credit card here. And in some cases, clients may come back and want a refund and you've got to do it on the same card. If they hand you a card and it doesn't match the four numbers here, then you know that that's an error. This uh, little icon here, when you tap on that, it'll take you to the actual individual records for the portal. That is, if you want to use a find to go see a, a specific entry, you can do it by going to the individual portal record and doing the find in that screen. The inventory status ta uh, tab on here, what this will do is it'll put all the product codes, their stock location, the stock balance they have on hand, the standard price for those items, and the low levels uh, where they're actually at, uh, Actually, it says low levels, and it's got a dollar sign. That's incorrect. But it'll have the low levels that if they are at that low level, that's where they're at. You can click this, and it'll take you to the inventory record for that particular item. Note up here that it says the, uh, the portal shows the inventory for all uh, stocked items, and it does not allow editing in this, this area. So if you click on it, you're going to see it does not edit. Uh, it'll show you the product code and the store where it's at. Now, how would you use this in some cases? Say, for example, you want to see if there's a item that's still out there. You can go to the inventory screen and you can check by clicking in this item on a particular item to see if it's in inventory in another store if you don't have a quantity for them. And if you have a quantity, it might be a situation where a store is nearby and they could, be, they could send it to you for the customer and then you can deliver it. And the way you would do that is you would cut an, uh, an invoice uh, when you sell the item to the customer then you would cut a purchase order that goes to the store, the other store, and you would buy it from them basically when you do the purchase order, just like you're buying from a vendor. In this case, instead, you would be buying it from the other store. And then it would change the inventory when you get it to your store by putting your own store I uh, location in there. Now, not all you are going to be using uh, store locations or have multiple stores, but this application will support that. Now let's go back and look at the sales data information. Sales data is very much like the purchase order we just discussed before this uh, tutorial, where you have the ID for the invoice, you have the 
in this case, the time the actual invoice was created and the date that it was created. And you can put the salesperson in here and you can also bounce over here and add additional salespeople. Once you enter a salesperson, do not delete them because when you delete them, you're also deleting it out of the records that are in the application. So you want to be able to go ahead and leave those in there and just add new ones as you have to. And the way you add a new one is just click new record, type in this field, the new person's name. If you want to edit one, if you spelled it wrong or whatever, just click on this. It'll bring up that one. You can edit it. You do a new one also if you had to. You can go over here and do edit in the do action menu. Let's go back to the main sales screen. In the sales screen now that you're ready to actually add items in, by clicking on the product code, you'll get the products that are in your inventory system. And there uh, is a little different way that it works on the, uh, the iPad and iPhone than it does on the desktop and cloud. If you're typing in here on the cloud or in PC or Mac, you can actually cause this to show only the records that pertain to that particular uh, thing that you're keying in uh, when you're in this mode. Usually this field is blank when you do that because there's nothing in there. So if I clicked in here, now I should be able to go in and say, in this case, and you can see the item. It's got the item uh, number, the part number for it, and the name of it. It shows you what store has it, and it should have the price included at the back of it so that you know when you put the price in for it, you got the standard price that you're actually selling this at. Okay, so if I typed in here, the first few letters of this, it should bring up, like if I do DUS, it should put it in there. So if I do DU, you can see it drops that field in there. When you actually type in those fields on your uh, Mac or your IP, IBM uh, product, it will, it will do the same thing. On the iPad, you're in a scroller, so it's a little bit different how you have to do that. But it will show you the records as it truncates them down to the ones that are actually available within that part number sequence. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to have, when you select it, it should put in the product name, but if it doesn't, for some reason, you can check to see if it's actually there by going to the inventory and make sure that it just is added or edited in the actual inventory system. Discount. Why would you do a discount? Well, this may be a special that you're selling an item and the standard price is so much and you have a list of items that you're selling on special. So you could put the discount uh, amount in here and then it would go ahead and uh, reduce the actual item by that amount as far as the sell price that you put in here. It'll reduce it. Sales tax. If you have sales tax, you have another screen you can go to and you can add your own sales tax rates. Don't ever take them out after you put them in because they may be used in other parts of the application. So this is the best way to uh, add them and you can always come back if they change and uh, use that date or that a percentage rate. Let's go clicking back over here. If you're not going to do any kind of tax at all, just select the blank record that's in there or do not put anything in this, this particular area here. Uh, if you click in, you should still be able to uh, use the copy or cut to pull this out of there. If you had to, you could do the, uh, the cut and it would remove that from that particular thing, uh, that particular field, so you don't have to use it if you accidentally added a percentage rate that you don't want don't want it in there. So the next thing is the tax. And before I go any further, I'm going to show you that you can click here. And if you're going to change the money symbol, you can do it within this area. And in this case right now, we have the US dollar connected in there. And that's a global thing where it'll do it on all the fields that have a dollar sign or money symbol on them. You can change it to your local uh, currency money symbol. So we've calculated now the, the quantity times the cost. We got the tax in it. And now we should get a line total down here with a sum for that line. This only takes actually about maybe five or six seconds to do each row. So it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of time to add in each row. Uh, sometimes, and I'll remark that people want to use barcodes to add the information in here. You're going to find out that it's going to take you three to five times longer to add using a barcode, where you put the information in a blank field. In this case, if I went in here, first click off, and go into a blank field and then do a scan, it's going to go ahead and put it in there, but if it doesn't scan the first time or second time, you could have already been done with this. It would have already added the information you're looking for. There's also at the end of each field a notes field. If this is a sale item and you put it in for a discount or you offered a discount on the spot, you can add a note on that particular item. Or and or if this is maybe a quote and it was quoted at a certain price and there's something different about what you're going to actually sell it at, you can put that information in here if it was a quoted item and the price is going to be different than the standard price. 
This little guy out here is a place where you can tap in and from your library for your photos, you can add your own logo into this area so that it'll show up on the invoice if you print them. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next screen that we're going to be working with. We did the sales screen and we did the list view. Let's do the portal real quick here. This is what the portal looks like. This is the individual record for each row within the invoice where you're doing the edit invoice. And you now can go ahead and uh, edit if you needed to here or and or do a uh, find to find a particular record out of an invoice and maybe do modify or make comments on that particular invoice. So it's really up to you how you want to do that. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to go back to the here and we're going to go down to the uh, we can do store location. Let's just real quickly, we'll pop into the list view just to show you there are two records currently in here and you can edit the amounts or whatever it is in here if you had to, but normally you would not use edits in here. You would use this screen to do um, finds, to find a group of records or and or a specific record either by the date, the store, the customer or the actual sales ID, which is what I normally use when I'm searching for an invoice. Say, for example, I want to see everything that's on the invoice and I want to print out a listing. I can do that by doing the uh, find and using the sales ID from the invoice that you came from on the sales screen. Let's go down to the next item, which is the actual sales invoice. On the sales invoice, there's a little information here about doing a, a, a uh, find within here. And the best way to do a find is, we, as we did in the list view prior to this, use the actual invoice ID either here or over here. And what it'll do is it'll present all the items that are in that particular invoice. When you open up the screen normally, you're going to see all kinds of stuff listed here. By putting in the current sales ID that you want to use, it will reduce it down to the actual invoice items for that invoice. You can see the information at the top of the screen and the, uh, the data that's in there for the particular client and everything that you use for this. Um, the next thing is to do the uh, do action for a find from, uh, from here. We'd find to find the actual invoice that you want to work with. Let's go to the next screen, which is the uh, payment sales screen. This is the portal for the payments. If you want to look up or edit or drop a column, out, a row out of the uh, invoice, you can bring it over here. Look at the information that's in here. If it's the same as the row you want, just go ahead and click that. and It'll knock that row out. Typically, you can come to the portal by clicking on the end of the payment row. It'll take you to this area if you want to remove that particular row. Be aware that if you try to edit or backspace the stuff out in a row on the uh, actual invoice, that is a very bad practice, and it might cause problems with the math on the actual uh, summary totals on the invoice. Just come over here and delete the actual row out so it updates properly. The next one is the uh, sales by store. What this actually does is, let's go ahead and click back on it, it didn't actually catch it. Tra sales report by store. This is where you would do finds for trend analysis and other information that you want to look at a store for a particular day's sales or and or for something about a product or something in that store on a trend analysis where you're looking to see how many a salesman, the particular salesperson has sold in a particular sales uh, event on a date or and or it could be over a period of a month or whatever. Especially if you're doing commission sales for your salespeople, that can give you a daily summary report or a summary report for the entire period as for all the money that was collected so you can pay commissions to your sales staff. If you don't use commissions for sales staff, then you may want to do it for other purposes in here. If you do a fine, make sure you go ahead and use this button to run the report so that you bring your headers back up so you can read the actual report the way it's supposed to be read. The next one is the sales by product. Now this is also a trend type of a uh, report where you want to see how often this particular item is sold and you can look over a period of time or you can look in a certain store or you can look by a salesperson who's selling the most of that same item and maybe there's some training required if the other employees are not actually selling that item for whatever reason. You can also do other things like 
has the price of the item changed? It was it a discounted item as far as when it was sold? And you can look at that particular product and see if it actually sold in different ways on different periods of time. And it also can be used very, very accurately to see what sold in what period of time for trend analysis. So for example, if you're going to purchase items, it'll help you to figure out what quantity you want to purchase for any given period of time. Say for example, certain things are for summer sales, winter or whatever. This will give you a good idea of how many sold and how many should be stocking for the next period coming up. Okay, let's go back over here and you'll see that we've completed this entire area and all the items in it. If you have any questions or I missed anything that you want to know about, go ahead and contact me so that I can give you more information.